Fourth of July, 2024. A godly republic for the good of the people. The signing in 1776 was not the victory for freedom. It was just an establishment of the rules. When Cornwallis left Yorktown in shackles, liberty was not preserved forever. The founding fathers are not Jesus, and they were not delivered to the earth to die for our liberty for all times. They were merely here to establish the rules and the concepts. Freedom is the perennial battle. It is the blue-collar battle and the blue-hair battle. We know what happens when they get us to fight each other. Look at the wealthy in the country. Look at the working class since 2020. Who's winning? There's a king of freedom. That's God. The renowned Massachusetts minister Philip Payson explained that the necessity for such oaths by saying that the fear and reverence of God and the terrors of eternity are the most powerful restraints upon men, hence it is special and of special importance in a free government. So where do the powers of free people and the duties of a free people lie? I ask you, PBN family, if freedom is the nail that never sinks and must be driven by man's will from generation to generation, then what is the tool? What is the hammer that drives the nail of freedom? It is the will of man to drive that nail until the next generation is old enough to take the hammer and understand that there will be no generation exempt from the toil of hammering the nail of freedom. And it is a nail that will never be sunk. But it's our duty. It's the perennial battle. John Adams had to say about republics, Republican government, as he wrote to Mercy Warren, could be supported only, quote, by pure religion or austere morals. Public virtue cannot exist in a nation without private and public virtue. It's It's the only foundation of republics. There must be a positive passion for the public good, or there can be no Republican government, nor any real liberty. This public passion, he emphasized, must be superior to all private passions. It's a very interesting thought in the times that we live in today. To his wife, Abigail Adams, he wrote that their children might suppose that he should have labored more for their benefit. And this is this is the perennial battle here, PBN family. That he should have labored more for their benefit. But I quote, I will tell them that I labor to procure a free constitution. And if they do not prefer this to ample fortune, to ease and elegance, they are not my children. And I care not what becomes of them. Enjoy your freedom today, PBN family. But understand you're locked in battle, whether you like it or not. The decisions you make, the choices that you make, decide man's freedom. You don't have to pay attention to the fight. You don't have to be in the fight, you know, emotionally. Um, But you are locked in battle. You're locked in the perennial battle started by our founders to keep mankind free. And you'll fight it, and your kids will fight it. And the only generation that won't have to fight the perennial battle of freedom is the one that is finally locked up in the chains of slavery. Keep that in mind, PBN family. Celebrate for America. We are the greatest nation on earth. Through it all, we still have the capacity to be the shining light on the hill. And I wish you a uh, a happy Independence Day. Thanks, everyone.